Hey everyone, this is OK Coyote. Welcome to my Magic the Gathering December Pack-A-Day Challenge for December 19th. Today's pack is Cons of Tarkir. For those of you that don't know what I'm doing, I am opening a pack of Magic the Gathering every day in December. And every pack is different, so 31 packs for 31 days. Uh, I'm doing this just for fun, because I felt like it, so you all get to watch. Okay, so, like I said, today's pack is Cons of Tarkir. I was not playing uh, around the Tarkir block, so I don't know much about it. I do know a little of the story. Uh, it involved some planeswalkers going to Tarkir, I believe, because they were looking for Ugin, the spirit dragon, who is a planeswalker. Uh, they were looking for Ugin to help them fight the Eldrazi back on Zendikar. Unfortunately, they came to Tarkir and found out that Ugin was dead because the dragons were all dead there. So, uh, time travel or something. Um, anyway, uh, the only other thing I know about this block is uh, it introduced the, uh, the cons, which were five three-color groups that were the wedge colors, so not allied groups like the Alara Shards, but the, they were the wedge combinations. Uh, so like red, white, blue, for an example. Um, and for the life of me, I can never remember what they're called. I can probably come up with all the names, but I couldn't tell you which 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 name goes to which combo. I know that there's there's uh, Jeskai, that's a popular one. There's Saltai, Abzan, Ojutai, and I don't remember the fifth. And no, I I don't know what they what uh what color combinations they are. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, I don't know a lot about what's in this set, but we are going to find out what's in this pack together. So, let's get into it. Okay. We start with... Whirlwind Adept. This is four and a blue for a 4-2 Jin Monk. It's an unusual combination of creature types. Uh, it has Hexproof and it has Prowess. Uh, prowess is now an evergreen ability, but uh, meaning you do see it in multiple sets, but you don't see it very often. Uh, so Prowess is whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Uh, usually shows up in blue and red, and people like to play this with uh, lots of cheap instants and sorceries, usually like little one-mana ones that will also draw you a card. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it's uh, a bit pricey at five mana, but if if you're building that kind of deck and you've got those uh, those cheap spells to fuel it, this could be a sleeper. Next up is Shatter, an uh, old school reprint, reprint from, I think, Alpha. One and a red instant, destroy target artifact. Uh, yep, this has seen many, many printings. It's not very good. Um, it only kills an artifact. Uh, the green version of this is naturalized, and that gets an enchantment, too. And that, even that's not very good. Uh, it's, it's one of those cards they have to make, because you got to have artifact removal. But you're not going to see it played too often. Anok Bondkin. One and a white for a 2-1 Hound Soldier with Outlast, one and a white. You can pay one and a white and tap to put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. Outlast only as a sorcery. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has first strike. So, I've seen these cards with Outlast. I don't really like them. Maybe they're good. Again, I wasn't playing then. But I don't really like these cards because I don't like that they Outlast as a sorcery. I would love to be able to do this on, you know, an end, end of turn or something. But basically saying, I'm not going to use this and I'm going to just tap it down. 
when you could be attacking with it or you could be blocking with it. Um, I just, I just don't like it. I don't feel it's very efficient. Wetland Sam, Sambar, not Sandbar, Sambar. One and a blue for a 2-1 elk. And that's it. It's no, no abilities. It's just an elk. That's weird and uh, bad. Maybe it was a sandbar. Maybe Oko got to it and turned it into an elk. Who knows? Rotting Mastodon. Uh, four and a black for a 2-8 zombie elephant. That is a very strange creature type and power and toughness and has no abilities. I don't know what to think about this. Um, it's vanilla. It's not very good, but it has a very high toughness and it's going to just sit there and eat up damage. So maybe it's good. I, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather I'd rather pull out some 4-4 flyer than than this. Um, but it's interesting. <laughs> Archer's Parapet. Here's where we get into uh, guild mechanics working together. You see some color bleed going on. So one and a green for a 0-5 wall with Defender. And for one and a black, you can tap, and each opponent loses one life. It's fine. Walls were never very strong. They're still not very strong. Like the elephant there, it's going to sit there and hold up the board and keep your opponent from attacking you. Um, but, you know, it's not very strong. If you're playing black, it gets a little better because it can hold up the board and then it can tap at the end of your opponent's turn and at least get a damage in. Still not too strong, but it's a little bit more useful when you've already got the two colors going on. Next we have Shambling Attendance. This is seven and a black. For a 3-5 zombie with Delve and Death Touch. Uh, so Delve says that each card you exile from your graveyard while casting this spell pays for one mana. So, this is 8 mana for a 3-5 Death Touch, but it could be a lot cheaper. Um, this is something you're going to want to build a deck around if you've got a lot of ways to dump cards into your graveyard. Some self-mill or something like that. Then this could be pretty good. Um, on its own, in a vacuum, it's probably not pretty good. So it really, you're not going to pick this early. It's really going to depend on what you've already got in this, uh, in this draft environment. We have Jungle Hollow. This is a land. It enters the battlefield tapped. When Jungle Hollow enters the battlefield, you gain one life. Tap to add black or green to your mana pool. These are fine. Um, can't argue with a good, uh... Dual land, um, the, you know, every every set's got dual lands of some sort, and this one gives you a life. Okay, I'll take it. Highland Game. One and a green uh, for a 2-1 elk. When Highland Game dies, you gain two life. See, this elk is better than the sandbar. At least this one gives you life when it dies. That one just sits there. So, yeah, it's, it's all right. We have... Oh. All right. I'm not used to seeing a three-color card at common, but here we are. Abzan Guide. Well, that tells you one of the wedges. White, black, green is Abzan. Uh, because this is three white, black, green for a 4-4 human warrior with a lifelink. Uh, it also has Morph. Two white, black, green. So you can play it for three as a face-down 2-2 creature, and then you can turn it face-up for its morph cost. And then it becomes a 4-4 lifelink. Interesting. It's probably pretty good, but it is it is three colors, which is difficult to pull off. Um, again, unless you've already got those going, it's very hard to, commit to, to want to commit to three colors early in the draft. You're probably not going to take this high up. Um... But, you know, again, I don't know this set. I know it's built around those three colors, so maybe it's easier than it looks. Going into the uncommons now, we have Timely Horde Mate. Three and a white for a 3-2 human warrior with raid. 
When Timely Horde Mate enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Hey, that's not bad. Um, you attack with something, and then you uh, put this down, and then you get something back. Um, you can get back an elk. Or something. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's pretty good. Mardu Charm. Oh, Mardu, that's the one I couldn't think of. Mardu is red, white, and black. This card is red, white, and black. Uh, it's an instant. Choose one. Um, charms have been around for a long time. They had single color charms and they had guild color charms. Now we've got three color charms. So the Mardu charm says choose one. Mardu charm deals four damage to target creature. Put two 1-1 one, one white warrior creature tokens onto the battlefield. They gain first strike until end of turn. Or target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Interesting. So you basically you have a red ability, a white ability, and a black ability. And it's an instant speed, which uh, for some of these abilities is unusual. Especially that discard. But uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Again, hard to commit to three colors. But if you're in those three colors, this will fit perfectly. It's a great card. Abzan Falconer, two and a white for a 2-3 human soldier with Outlast White. Uh, each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has flying. Again, cool, but slow, and I don't like the mechanic. I just don't. Before we get to the rare, let's look at the rest of the pack. Um, looks like we've just got an ad card in the back here. Got here uh, a little bit of lore about Sarkhan Val. And then on the back here on the other side uh, is a little thing about Planeswalker points, which no longer exist. Rip Planeswalker points. We've got our basic land, which is a swamp. There it is. It's a swamp. Okay. And our rare is Jeering Instigator. One and a red for a 2-1 Goblin Rogue with Morph 2 and a red. So you may play it face down and you can turn it up for 3. When Jeering Instigator is turned face up, if it's your turn, gain control of another target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. Cool. Uh, so it's a, it's a Goblin with an Act of Treason attached. I like it. Um, you're paying six, basically. So you're paying three to play it face down, and then three to flip it over and use the act of treason. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like getting two spells for one card. It's, it's not bad. Um, I don't know if it's strong enough to be the first pick in this pack, but... Not really sure what is first pick in this pack. Maybe it's the Horde Mate. Maybe I just build around that. Let's have some white creatures without last that I hate. And bring them back to the battlefield. So I can hate them some more. Sure, we'll go with that. I don't think it's the right choice. But uh, I didn't see a lot I liked in this pack. But... Anyway, for better or for worse. There we are, that's Cons of Tarkir. That's going to do it for this pack. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you liked this video. And you can subscribe to my channel and also follow me over on Twitter at OKCoyote. Uh, that's it for the Pack-A-Day Challenge for today. We will see you tomorrow with another pack. Thanks.